So I was thinking about the way that I usually communicate with Reflections on Heart supporters and I realized that most of it is via text and typing and I think that that's really boring and impersonal. So from now on, I decided that I'm going to create monthly video updates uh, to keep you all in the loop about the progress of Reflections on Heard as well as any other projects I may be working on. So today is the very first update. Uh, it's the 31st, Happy Halloween. Um, and I hope all of you guys are doing well. I've literally been plowing through the final stages of the film. The film is still in post-production. Right now I have the entire layout for the film, so I have um, I have actually a written document of what the entire film is going to look like. Um, and I've started editing the uh, segment on Black Power. So for some, some of you know that uh, the, the film is sort of like in three parts. There's a segment on Black Power, there's a segment on feminism, and then there's a segment on um, women of color organizing, political organizing. So um, I'm really excited about what I wrote and, and what I have so far. Um, and I think it's gonna be very dynamic and interesting. There's a lot of rich content and I'm really excited about what I have. One of, one of my challenges has been obtaining permission to use certain archival historical footage for the film. Copyright has been a constant obstacle for me and many other documentary filmmakers. Over the past several years, one of the things that I've found is that there are so many, there's, there's so many relevant um, very historically rich, relevant materials available for research in elite institutions and um, private businesses, but then um, they, you know, those same institutions and businesses will sell them for thousands of dollars um, if you want to publish them in either a book or a film, uh, and they'll charge up to maybe like thousands of dollars per photo, um, fifty dollars per second if you're buying footage. So it's it's a big problem, and I honestly, um, it's something that I want to speak out uh, about once the film is complete because I believe that um, it's they're robbing our communities basically of, of our history. Many many of these producers, they were white male producers, they went into black communities, filmed them at a certain uh, crucial historical period, turning point in history, and then they take the footage and they keep it for themselves and they will only, they'll only allow other um, privileged producers to access it and that leaves a lot of people who are actually part of those communities in the dust. Um, that's definitely a problem, that's something that uh, I've been struggling with also emotionally and um, yeah, so that's that's just a little rant about that. But at this point, most of my footage that I used in the film is in the public domain, so it's not an issue. But there are also uh, a lot of very useful, very historically and aesthetically rich uh, archival clips that I would like to publish in the film and um, you know right now I don't have any money to use to uh, to pay for licensing fees when I when I say that I don't have any money I mean I'm literally I'm contacting these archives inquiring about these clips and telling them that I don't have money that they can understand where I'm coming from and give me a break um, you know, and hopefully everything will work out with those things, but if if it doesn't, um, then we'll have to work something else out and, and go from there. But that's really where I'm at right now in terms of uh, researching and, and finding um, clips that will work well within the film. Also, I'm just going to keep this really real because I was talking about this with a friend last night. I realized that for so many people, film has this sort of magical quality to it. And uh, it's so easy to get caught up in, uh, you know, when you're watching a film, you, your senses are consumed and you, you have the audio, you have the visual, um, you're caught up in the experience. And, and it's almost like watching a film takes you into a different reality, which is why it's so powerful which is why I choose this medium. But um, a lot of times, because most people are not in the industry, they don't have an understanding, or maybe they f just forget that there is a human being behind the film that is informing the entire film, that's the brainchild, or maybe a group of people that's the brainchild for the film. 
Um, and that is why it's, it's so important to scrutinize the filmmakers just as much as you scrutinize the actual content that's being presented in the film, because uh, that content came from a person. Of course, that can also be very political, too. Um, the fact that I'm a black woman who is producing a film about black women is very political, being that most of the films that you see that are about black people um, about black women are produced by rich white men and they are for uh, a mostly white audience. They're not for any specific activist purpose. It's very political and I think that the conditions under which I have to produce this film or the process that I have to go through as a black female artist, as somebody who does not receive as much funding as, um, as a normal run-of-the-mill white male producer that needs to be scrutinized as well that needs to be looked at and um, I that's why I'm bringing it to light because it's very important I've been working on this film for a very long time by myself not gonna lie it's um, uh, I mean it's been an amazing amazing journey and I have had some support from people along the way but I've been working on this film by myself for the most part. Um, I spend a lot of my time off researching, editing, uh, archiving, organizing, uh, transcribing, watching, waiting, writing to people, uh, just everything. Like, I mean, really, it's, it's a labor of love. Um, I'm very, very dedicated. I'm very serious about this. And uh, it's this is my baby. I don't want anybody to to touch it and and mess it up t either. So um, apart from the fact that yes, I don't have this huge crew and this huge team. This is also this is also a project that's very important. Um, and I want it to I I want to make sure that I get the message across for the audience so that I can make sure that um, this is crafted so that it's is digestible for people to understand what this means. I don't ever want it to make it seem like just because I've uh, encountered some success and some support for Reflections Unheard that I'm not grinding because this is absolutely, I'm absolutely on my grind. Um, this Making this film continues to be a struggle for me um, and it always has been. And, um, you know, I that's that's why I thrive on your support. Having support from different individuals, different organizations, is what motivates me and inspires me to continue what I do. If you would like to support Reflections Unheard in any way, um, there are so many ways that you can do that. I've posted the link to the donation button at the bottom in the description box of this video so you can make a financial contribution. Also, um, send, me a, send me an email, uh, send me a, a letter of support, or just send me a comment on, on this video. Um, just anything, a, emotional support, um, that, that helps a lot. Also, outreach. If you know of an organization or an individual who might be interested in the film or who can screen the film or who can support it, please let them know about it. Tell your friends and family. Share the trailer with your friends and, um, and encourage them to... Um, to follow this on Facebook or Twitter. So all of those little things are incremental and they may be slow and small, but they really, really count and I'm watching all of it um, and I am appreciating all of it. So thank you for those who have supported Reflections on Her thus far. Um, and I hope that we can continue to do so. Just just as a side note, many of you know that on October 6th, I believe, to October 8th, um, Earlier this month, I had a screening uh, at Tulane University that was hosted by uh, Professor Melissa Harris Perry. And um, that screening was amazing, amazing, amazing. And um, so many people showed up. Uh, the, the Facebook group showed that um, maybe like 60 people were going to show up. but And I thought that there were going to be 30. And then like over a hundred people showed up on a Monday night and it was just, it was amazing. Um, some people came from far and wide. They traveled hours to see it. So I was really thankful to, um, to encounter that amount of support for the film. Also for the level of audience engagement, that was amazing too. Um, definitely meeting people, um, just the whole experience of, of being in New Orleans, because that was my first time there. Um, meeting people, 
um, spending a couple of days just to talk about these issues, you know, day in and day out, that was, that was amazing. And I really uh, have my heart set on coming back in the future. So um, I'm going to be working on that once the film is released and also before. Also, just as a side note, that was my first time in the South. Um, it was beautiful. Um, and, you know, I got like two hours of sleep that night uh, and I had to rush off to, to catch the, the plane um, very early in the morning. So by the time I, I got to New Orleans, I was exhausted. And as soon as I checked in, um, I, I just dropped my stuff and I, I walked next door to Audubon Park, um, which is a very, very gorgeous park. Um, and I sat down on a bench underneath a palm tree and I took like a 15 to 20 minute nap um, and it was heavenly. I thought I died and went to heaven um, and it was very relaxing. And then a couple hours later, um, I spoke with a Tulane student and she told me that that park used to be a huge slave plantation. So um, that was a huge learning experience for me. Um, and I will keep that in mind next time I'm there. So anyway, just to wrap up, I hope all of you are recovering from Hurricane Sandy and taking care of yourselves. Um, I will be traveling to DC within the next few weeks to um, do some research, the final research for the film, um, and collecting footage, collecting photos of interest, um, seeing what I can find, and I will probably do my next update from there. So thank you, so thank you for all of those who watch this in its entirety. I really appreciate it, and I will be sure to keep you posted. All right, thanks. Peace.